Of the southern parts of the Baltic Sea unite the shores of Denmark, Germany, Lithuania, Poland and Sweden. This coastal area is the home of almost 9 million Europeans. People who share a common maritime heritage and a commitment to cooperation across the sea. Since 2008, a European programme has been supporting their endeavours to strengthen businesses and to protect the environment by building bridges between people and institutions across borders. With 57 million euro invested by the European Union, the South Baltic programme brought together more than 400 organisations in 69 cooperation initiatives. Providing financial support for six flagship initiatives, the programme also contributed to the implementation of the EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region, the first macro-regional strategy in Europe. United in diversity, the people of the South Baltic explored new ways for tackling the common challenges. Ways that teach to think together, invent together and act together. Smart ways. A number of cross-border initiatives sought to improve the South Baltic business environment. These efforts include support measures for both small businesses as well as large investments. An initiative called Going Abroad was designed to encourage businesswomen to start international activities. It applied the so-called success team method to business peers across borders. The success team brings regularly together businesswomen from different branches. These meetings offer conditions for mutual inspiration and support. We used this method internationally, so we had success teams for development of the entrepreneurs' businesses with participants for two or four, three countries. Going abroad involved about 300 female entrepreneurs managing a South Baltic-based micro-businesses. One of them is Doiva Selina. She's a jewellery designer from Lithuania, looking for new business perspectives. Participation in going abroad helped her to start international activities. The results exceed what she expected from this initiative. Before I became a member of this project, I thought about the only one thing, to earn more money selling my jewel abroad. When I have heard uh, about one big event in Germany with the trade fair, I decided uh, also to participate and the members started to help me. One of them offered me to stay at her house during this event. Uh, other organized me a place and contract with the organizations and uh, I could uh, to take part and to do what I wanted. Today, Daiva is the proud owner of the growing enterprise. She attracted new customers from all over the world and hired a new employee because of their growing demand. The European Union introduced measures to reduce the air pollution caused by maritime transport. Stricter emission limits in the Baltic Sea region obliged the shipping industry to look for fuel alternatives. A group of South Baltic experts recognized that this change would open new business opportunities. United in an initiative known as MarkTech LNG, they were determined to unleash the business potential of liquid natural gas. LNG. As an alternative fuel, LNG can reduce air pollutants and comply with the new requirements. But back in 2012, something was still missing. Something that can make South Baltic businesses competitive on a global scale. This will never be competitive for one port, one city, etc. Because this needs to be with a value chain. So all region working together only can achieve that. For a functional LNG supply chain across borders, MarTech LNG introduced tools to connect and build up know-how. These included the GoLNG.EU portal, 
a unique platform for sharing LNG knowledge and connecting businesses. The partnership conducted training programs for businesses on LNG terminal construction and operation. But how can all these efforts translate into business results? We can uh, develop services and products for the LNG as a clean fuel that would be in demand all over the world. And this would open up huge opportunities for our ship owners, for our shipyards, for our marine technology providers, just name it. That's a huge industry that could be, that we could uh, be all benefiting from. Martek LNG supported large-scale tenders. These include the capacity allocation of the Lithuanian LNG terminal and a bunker station for the first Danish domestic ferry powered by LNG. We were getting the first uh, domestic ferry uh, in, uh, in the EU running on the LNG and uh, the, the project is all about creating new infrastructure at sea and, uh, and of course uh, we, we, were, we were interested in getting uh, help and, uh, and uh, expertise in, in, in getting this project off the ground. But can soft cross-border activities like networking, matchmaking and training lead to strong business impacts? The bunker station on Samso alone was an investment of 5 million euro. A number of other companies started commercial operation or prepared the ground for new investments. An LNG bunker vessel worth 11 million euro. An LNG dredger for Clypeda port worth 30 million euro. Major focus is of course industry, so we've been uh, aiming at developing the competences and technological solutions for uh, enabling the business models in the region. We calculated the direct influence on uh, business projects worth of 46 million euros altogether. Martek LNG was labelled as a flagship project under the European Union strategy for the Baltic Sea region. For the South Baltic regions, tourism is an important economic factor and source of income. To go beyond classical beach tourism, the South Baltic tourism experts came up with new cross-border products and services. We have had contacts for many years with the partners from our neighbouring countries, so the programme helped us to further develop this intercultural dialogue and cooperation, which is crucial to create common understanding and then further develop uh, in business life to, to realize the potential in the single market. Also to uh, improve the tourist cooperation. Some projects have created new bicycle tourism roads with special signs. Others have focused on developing the sea tourism. We have renovated the passenger terminal in Nexa. How can a point of interest attract tourists to more than one location? A cross-border alliance called Baltic Museums can give us the answer. Four museums recognized a smart way to attract more sea lovers and enthusiasts. New services are now available for tourists not only in Gdynia, Stralsund, Klaipeda or Kaliningrad, but in all four places at once. Their joint website offers virtual tours, informs about exhibitions and other regional attractions. New levels of edutainment for all ages is now not a matter of competition, but a joint invention. An e-guide offers a tailor-made navigation for the visitors. It is available in all four museums and uses the same technology. This makes the joint development and sharing of multimedia contents between museums much easier. Nie tylko poznaliśmy różne kultury um, naszych partnerów, Wyprodukowaliśmy wiele propozycji, które są przeznaczone dla turystów międzynarodowych, czyli są przygotowane w różnych językach, ale też zdobyliśmy wielu przyjaciół z zagranicy. The benefits of working together were recognized by the sailing tourism as well. The project marriage linked the expertise of marina managers from Poland, Lithuania and Germany. They introduced joint marketing schemes and developed better marina services. Their goal was to make boating tourism more popular in unexplored destinations along the South Baltic Rim.
all the information of all the ports are now in a comprehensive form available. We can also see not only the nautical information for sailors, but also the touristical information. Uh, so uh, we can enjoy the cultural highlights or let's say um, the nightlife. We know where something is happening and uh, so it's very, very helpful. Under the label South Coast Baltic, the project encouraged sailors to expand their boating experience. South Coast Baltic was promoted at various international trade fairs, reaching prominent visitors. Organizowaliśmy spotkania przedstawicieli marin zachodnich, niemieckich i marin z Polski oraz z Litwy. To były spotkania na zasadzie wymiany doświadczeń, wymiany wiedzy, warsztatów. Saving the Baltic Sea requires cooperation. This has become the guiding principle for South Baltic environmentalists who came together to tackle common challenges. Challenges such as the airborne emissions from ships, the management of dredged sediments, the protection of the valuable ecosystems or the explosive growth of algae, a process known as eutrophication. A number of water bodies in the South Baltic coastal area are influenced by both coastal and freshwater. These very specific conditions are the reason for calling them transitional waters. The Koronian, Vistula and Odra lagoons, as well as the Oresund Strait, are transitional waters affected by people across borders. The protection of their unique flora and fauna requires cross-border coordination. All these lagoons are cross-border. Actually, when we have uh, Kind of, a, kind of a physical or geographical integrity of the water bodies, politically they are divided. And the idea of how to come closer for the integration of different countries on the effort of preserving, uh, sustainably exploiting the lagoons actually just came to the, uh, came to the light. Pirmiausia, tai kiekvienas projektas priverčia tave išeiti iš savo orbitos, savo kasdienių darbų orbitos ir pradėti mąstyti, kas vyksta aplinkui tave, kas vyksta šalia, ką daro kitos šalys, kokios jų patirtys. Tai yra ko gero pats geriausias dalykas, tai komunikacija ir bendravimas. Ir tuomet, kai visa pietų Baltijos pakrantė suneša savo problemas ir pamatom, kad jos yra panašios, tai yra labai didelis džiaugsmas. Advei developed a guideline for cross-border management of transitional waters. The findings and recommendations can be applied elsewhere in the European Union and even worldwide. Flood protection is another challenge that the South Baltic communities have in common. Today, a number of dikes protect vast areas and millions of people in the South Baltic regions. Considerable investments are needed for the maintenance and construction. The shortage of construction material, however, sparked the creativity of German and Polish experts. The main goal of the project was to get dredged materials and ashed composites implemented in dike constructions. The main sub-goal was to show that new ideas and new materials are suitable to replace common materials and conventional solutions. We have similar problems with dredged material, with materials, sediments in water bodies that have to be dredged and taken out of the water body. And on the other side, we need flood protection in the whole of the South Baltic region and also dikes as flood protection constructions. And so on the, on the one side we have the surplus of materials which are legally a waste but which shall be recovered and on the other side we have a great need of construction material. With two pilots in Rostock and Dykes, the Dredge Dykes project 
proof that this self-Baltic idea is viable. The technical and legal findings even inspire cities outside the program area. In the city of Hamburg, the ongoing discussion about the use of dredged materials in dikes along the river Elbe benefited from the results of the dredge dikes project. The international cooperation was perfect for this topic because we have these problems in the, in the different countries in the South Baltic region and we have different legal backgrounds there. And this is an important thing when recovering waste materials in construction. And uh, so we learn from each other how to deal with this problem legally, but also from the construction point of view. And that was yeah, very fruitful. How does cross-border connectivity translate into South Baltic products and services? The answer includes a number of improvements for people and businesses, like cross-border tickets, as well as new air and ferry connections. United by the project Interface Plus, local authorities succeeded to reconnect the Polish sea resort of Darłowo with the Danish island of Borholm. The route is growing in popularity among tourists. W mieście Darłowo realizowany był projekt, którego głównym celem było przede wszystkim doprowadzenie do wzrostu ilości połączeń promowych z Darłowo do Nexo. W myśl hasła przewodniego projektu Walk the Baltic, Take the Ferry i to się udało zrobić. Połączenia funkcjonują, z każdym rokiem będziemy chcieli, żeby tych połączeń było coraz więcej. walking across the Baltic Sea. This is what the South Baltic product promises. The Intercombi ticket was designed by the project interface. It connects ferry and public transport operated by different carriers across the border. With more than 7,000 tickets sold already during the pilot phase, the product has been integrated in local ticketing systems. With one single ticket, foot passengers can use the public transport of Rostock, the ferry between Germany and Denmark, as well as the bus service to Nykøbing faster. We solve very daily questions of the cross-border passenger transport. Normally, transport planners, transport managers think in cargo categories, and we thought in a human category. Our main goal in the interface project was and is the cross-border integration. That means we aimed to use the Baltic Sea as a connecting element and not as a separating element. The project Interface Plus introduced a unique cross-border passenger information system. It provides real-time information on schedules, delays or transfer times. The system uses screens in buses, terminals and at bus stations. It processes real-time data provided by public transport and ferry operators across the Baltic Sea. Bisher existierte noch kein Echtzeitinformationssystem für Großfähren. Wir mussten das vollkommen neu entwickeln. Das ist nicht das Problem der Erfassung, sondern der Prognose. Die Fähren fahren nicht auf Straßen oder auf Eisenbahnschienen. Hier mussten vollkommen neue Wege begangen werden. Und wir haben sehr viele Partner gewinnen können, internationale Partner, mit denen wir zusammen dieses Know-how entwickelt haben. Passagiere, die Rostock, von Rostock fahren oder am Rostock Hauptbahnhof ankommen, können komfortabel weiterfahren nach Dänemark. Sie bekommen an jeder Haltestelle in jedem Fahrzeug die entsprechenden Informationen für die nächsten Fahrzeuge in Echtzeit, das heißt über die gesamte Reisekette bis Kopenhagen, sodass sie immer komplett informiert sind, äh, kriege ich meinen Anschluss oder muss ich meine Reise abbrechen. Insofern ist das eine neue Qualität, die wir hier erzeugt haben, geschaffen haben, gemeinsam mit vielen Partnern. Äh, viele Passagiere haben sich äh, schon sehr bedankt, äh, das ist neu für sie. Für sie ist es sehr komfortabel, aber wir haben auch schon Anfragen aus anderen Ländern, aus Schweden, aus Norwegen, diese Idee nachzunutzen. Das Gleiche auch, aber auch aus der Logistikbranche für Frachtverkehr, also Cargoverkehr. 
Better air accessibility was the goal of South Baltic Global Access, a project that brought together airports from the South Baltic member states. The exchange on management practices paid off, with a number of new connections to major hubs. So the idea is, let's say, basically to, to have more connections with airplanes and uh, to provide better connectivity to these regions. First thing is you put several partners together, which normally would not work together. So that's one very important reason how to improve development and business development in our region, so partnership. Second thing is uh, that you develop new methodologies how to uh, create new businesses. So for instance, um, all these airports have undertaken, for instance, uh, passenger potential analysis, uh, where, they, where you can find out how many people would like to go where out of your region. So all these matters haven't been um, researched in that depth before. We started the, or the airport of Rostock Lage started the connection with Frankfurt and with Lufthansa. But the thing was that the cooperation with Lufthansa was very deepened. So, and now we have, based on this deeper and good uh, cooperation, we have the result that we have now a, a new connection to another hub in Germany with Lufthansa in the business area. So uh, now you can fly during the week for business people, you can fly to Munich and from there all over the world. What kind of workforce does the South Baltic area need to have? A skilled and motivated workforce that can serve future economic needs. Many schools across the South Baltic, however, struggle to increase the interest of students in the maritime industries. The South Baltic Technolympics, therefore, introduced new forms of motivation by means of rewards and role models from the industry. Uh, for example, here on Bornholm, when we when we started the Subato, we had a lot of talk with with the with the companies, and especially in the maritime areas. We found out that we had to do something about education. The goal was to to have these young people from Germany and Poland and Denmark uh, to meet and to try to compete and to find out that it was really great to meet other young people from from other countries and then, of course, to meet uh, companies from these three different uh, countries also. Interaction with industry was at the heart of another South Baltic project too. The mission of the Generation Bolt was to meet the demands of a changing maritime labour market. Generation Bolt was a project dedicated to train the future experts of uh, the Baltic Sea, meaning the future experts who in the next uh, 20, 30 years will make a difference and will become the leaders in different areas, uh, different field of work. And that was covering from all the uh, different aspects of the maritime sector, but also the marine sector. I'm really proud and, and really uh, happy with the outcome of the project. Um, and one of the reasons is because um, many of the young uh, people, the young professionals, actually changed job or found a job. I read about it in uh, my union paper and it was a really, really small ad that there was a project going on and they were looking for students um, with a maritime background. And since I have a degree in uh, marine biology and coastal ecology from um, the University of Plymouth, I decided to give it a try. I looked into it at the web page and we would go to different countries, explore the maritime industry in different countries and see what the needs were uh, around the Baltic Sea and in Sweden. And uh, I was at the time uh, having a job, a non-qualified job, uh, a part-time job as well. So I, and I was outside of my maritime field completely and I wanted to get back into that. So I figured I, it's just my last chance to do something with my degree. Uh, before I participated in Generation Bolt, 
I had sort of um, lost touch with the maritime industry. I had two children and I was away from that line of work for a very long time. And the course sort of gave me the, um, uh, a key back into the business again. So I got the contacts, I got the confidence and I applied for a job which I wouldn't even have dared to apply for. It was uh, life changing for me because all of a sudden I had a salary that I could um, uh, live off, which wasn't really the case before. Um, and I get to explore different opportunities within the maritime industry that I didn't even have a chance to do before I got into the internship and the course. I've grown uh, personally and professionally uh, a lot. The courses of Generation Bolt were run by universities in Germany, Lithuania, Poland and Sweden. They cover fields such as marine technologies, green shipping and offshore wind energy. This training program continues to grow in popularity and spreads to other regions. We have had a spin-off effect, uh, meaning that we have implemented new courses um, that completely originate from, from the Generation Belt concept. And uh, one of the examples is, uh, for instance, the Vasco de Gama uh, project, which is uh, um, covering from the Atlantic to the Baltic Sea. Cultural awareness combined with management skills and entrepreneurial spirit. This is the vision of the South Baltic Training Program for the future of vocational training. What we did, we actually took 54 uh, companies and 70 students from different branches and we matched them together. Uh, and this project also had a testing model and this testing model was used with one week introduction and we also had three weeks of training. And after the three weeks of training, we had a recap where the students and the companies, together with the teachers, could reflect on what happened. What were the social skills, were the backgrounds, their own career objectives, how they could fulfill their dreams. The project offered students the opportunity to develop skills and business ideas with South Baltic companies. This concept was tested in 40 different vocational sectors. One of them was boat building. Marcin, a student from Poland, literally made a hands-on experience in Sweden. His Swedish mentor left a mark on his career path. Martin from, from Stettin, he was a student in the university, so he was a bit surprised when he came here that he should work with, with his hands, with hand tools, as uh, chisels, planers and hand saws. He was uh, pleased when he left. An internship at an art gallery in Sweden changed the career path of another Polish student, Kaya. She has always been passionate about arts and design. For Kaya, the South Baltic training program was the discovery of a new talent. She organized an art exhibition in Poland, an effort which made the work of Swedish artists such as Bang Salta more popular on the other side of the Baltic Sea. The warsztaty, które odbywały się i przygotowywały nas jakby do tego wyjazdu, były tyle, o tyle ciekawe, że dotyczyły jakby różnych dziedzin. Coś, co pamiętam najbardziej, to taką, takie zajęcia o stereotypach, jakie panują w różnych krajach. I mogliśmy właśnie z, z pierwszej ręki od tych ludzi z, z zagranicy, z którymi później mieliśmy wyjeżdżać, dowiedzieć się na przykład, co oni sądzą o naszym kraju, jakie oni widzą stereotypy. E, I tak samo, co my uważamy o nich, a okazało się, że wiele z tych rzeczy tak naprawdę nie jest prawdą. Today, Kaya is a successful project manager in the creative industry. With many success stories like these, the South Baltic training program became another contribution to the EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region. The new program, the South Baltic program 2040-2020, will target the available funding, approximately 80 million euros, from the European Regional Development Fund to sectors which are key 
and which are of common interest for the future of the entire area. Unlocking the potential for blue and green growth has therefore been chosen as the strategic objective, the mantra for the new programming period. Blue, representing the Baltic Sea, our common resource for economic development, and green, underlining the importance to preserve the attractiveness of the South Baltic for future generations. I think the programme brings great opportunities, even for small organisations. We can actually guide them through the whole process from the, from the application stage through the implementation to the project closure. So um, this is something that with courage, I would say, everybody can do.